One of the oldest vehicles in the world is running right past us. Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And in this automotive early history, well, this is the earliest automotive history. Alan Travis, good friend to the channel and automotive historian, what year, make, and model is this early automobile? This is an 1897 DDO explosion trike. Let's take a look at that. Now you said trike, but it's really considered an automobile. It's an automobile. The trike portion of it is because it, it's, this configuration is three wheel. They also had the exact same vehicle. You could add the second wheel to the front, which made it a quadra trike. Tell me what the outfit means. Well, this is an 1898 motoring uh, jacket jacket and hat so this is what you wore when you're motoring you had a total loss vehicle you had a vehicle that was explosive so your oil wouldn't permeate your, your body uh, and if you fell off you you got some straight resistance and we're going to go right to the earliest automobile so as you can see this you can see why it looks like a trike but there is a four-wheel configuration we're going to show you that in a moment what, uh, let's start with this badge here. This badge is important, tell us why. This badge tells you that this is a certified DDO Bouton made in 1897. It was taken to Europe, to England, to get that certification done. It takes five years, and it really designates that it's absolutely authentic, and it's the oldest DDO Bouton explosion trike in the world. This is it. The earliest serial number. The earliest serial number. And now it's 007, James Bond. Tell me why. Uh, I ran this in the London to Brighton race about seven or eight years ago. Uh, I was the oldest non-steam, non-coal powered vehicle running on hydrocarbons. So I was the seventh vehicle off the line, but the very first one that was running uh, fuel. Got it. And as we step back, come alongside me here. Okay, these are the great brakes it has. The great brakes uh, are front brakes and rear brakes. And it just pushes on the front tire, which will slow it right down if you need to. Okay. Uh, the next thing is you have the kerosene headlight. You have... Let's stay on the kerosene headlight for a second. So, I mean, we're talking 18... 97 here. Yep. Show how that kind of comes apart. You put the, the kerosene in the bottom. Yep, you put, and then you, you bring it apart here. There's your wick, and your, your kerosene goes in here, and this is how you adjust your wick for the height. So there's your first Schwinn bicycle light uh, that you can see there. Here's your horn, and while you're putting that together, I'm just gonna show, this is our battery box. You'll see that in a second. We're actually gonna do a demonstration for you. This is gonna be your fuel. We'll talk about that, but look at that beautiful badge there. And we'll talk about all these details. So what is this down here? That's the registration. You had to have a bicycle registration or an automobile registration, so that's where you carried it. Oh, wow. Obviously, we have a little mud flap there. So why don't we, uh, as I back up, I'll just show the seat as well. But let me show you some, uh, I'll call them trunk and, trunk and treats right for Right here, this is the actual brochure for the vehicle. And you can see that it calls it an automobile. It does say motorcycles on the front too. So this was the earliest automobile that they had. We'll open that up. This is from 1897. So there's your tricycle configuration. Here's your four-wheel configuration. And, and, and two passenger allowed the passenger to sit up front. Yeah, spin that sideways so we can see this. This is what we're gonna show you on the other side. Tell us a little bit about the fuel right now. So, so when we get to that side of that box that I just showed you with the beautiful emblem on it. This is what's inside there. Kinda this is called a surface carburetor. They hadn't invented carburetors yet. They simply put explosive fumes inside of here. Of, they either put hexane or hemptane or petroleum ether. Um, and then the fumes from this would be pushed into the intake manifold. 
by adjusting these levers and those fumes would fire in the intake manifold. Okay, let's flip that next page. That's a Voiturette version of the same thing. Uh, that was a a face-to-face -face one if you had a seat in the front. This is all in French. And that's a full face-to-face vis-a-vis -face, um, -vis configuration. Share with me, what is this right here? This little, this is actually a trophy. This is a trophy from 1901 saying that they had delivered 25,000 of these motors, which powers that up, by 1901. You know, they were in automobiles, in trikes, and maybe some two-wheel vehicles. But, you know, Harley-Davidson kind of started in 1903, but they really didn't make their first motorcycles for the public until 1907 or 1908. But mm -hmm. by 1901, DDO had already made 25,000 vehicles. Spin that around. Vehicles. Look at that. There we go. Now you'll see that Didi own emblem here live in a second. And this was just a trading card that showed the vehicle. And we'll flip that over for a moment. It talks about number 112. But it talks about, I'm just gonna do this because it's getting a glare off it. From the lights. What oh, was a terrifying vehicle? We're going to talk about that in a moment and why it's so terrifying. But what do we have here? This is the original oil. This may be the oldest oil can there is. So look at the top of it. Let me just have you take your hand off for a second. Okay, go ahead. And this oil can was specifically for the vehicle that we're talking about. And they only made these from 1897 to 1899, basically. So this oil can has to be 125 years old. Uh, it probably has whale oil in it. That's what I had read, at least. It's still half full, and I still use the same oil for the same vehicle. Wow. Can you spin that around? Uh-huh. That's amazing. I'm just going to come to the side of it. There we go. Wow. Okay, let's go. Right back. So Alan, let's take a look at the business end of this, which is right back here. Let's start with, uh, we'll kind of go from left to right. Tell us what we have here. We have the exhaust pipe here. Mm -hmm. This is one of the footrests for the passenger. The passenger stands on this footrest and that footrest, so it's a two passenger. Got it. This is the, this is the make and break, uh, basically distributor. While uh, you're undoing that, I'm just gonna show the bottom as we saw in that engine where it says, Gideon and Burton. So this is our, our earliest distributor. Just move that forward if you would. I'll kind of follow you along. You can see how that works. You can bring it back if you like. You can see it pop just right like that. So think about that. That's your first distributor. Okay. We'll put that uh, back together if you like, or we can just go- We'll leave it off for yeah, a bit. For, for a moment. This is the intake valve. This intake valve is considered to be a poppet valve, which means it has no camshaft operating it. It's operated by suction, by the piston going down, it opens and closes this valve. And that's got that spring there, and I see the spark plug, okay. By changing the spring tension, you can make the duration longer. Um, or shorter based on your tension. Okay. As this is pushed forward, uh, that pop valve opens and closes and pushes the mixture into the intake manifold. Got it. And we can't push it fast enough at half right. a mile an hour to see it move, but. I can see the, the uh, drive here. So we've got, it looks like two drives. We've got a gear drive and some, some springs, but let's stay on this side. So here's our coil. Well, this, this is the gear drive, so the transmission rear end ratio okay. would be this divided into this. Okay. So the engine spins four times for the revolution of one cycle on the, 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 the back axle, maybe. Got also, it. this is an automobile because this has a differential. So as I grab the tires, they can both go different directions oh, very because it's got a differential. Go ahead which is really important, so you, it doesn't require any leaning. 
It's not a tricycle that has a fixed axle. Right. It's got a differential, so you steer it around corners. Got it. Okay. And I see too, we've got a serial number here. Yep. Right there. That, that's for the year 1897, and this was motor number 211. So this is 211, which is January of 1897, and these two halves have been together for 126 years, 127 years, because they're numbered the same on both sides. And we've got there's where your oil would come out, your whale oil. Yep, so this is a numbers matching engine. Brakes. Uh, th this, these are asbestos bands on steel. Asbestos doesn't care about oil being on it, so it's a pretty effective rear brake. This is your gear ratio, basically your rear end. So the ratio between that gear and this gear might be four or five to one, that would be your ratio. So every five RPM of the engine, you'd have one RPM of the tires or whatever the ratio turned out to be. Got it. Um, What's in the black box here? The black box is your multi-vibrator coil. Got it, and we'll talk about that in a second. What's this here? That, this was a dangerous vehicle, and that was your, your St. Christopher medal that offered you some safety as you would do your travels because you're on the most dangerous, scary vehicle in the world at the time. So you had to have your safety with you. So St. Christopher went on every ride with you. <laughs> nice. And then we, uh, we already talked about this in the manual. Right up there we have that bell. Go out, we can ring that. I don't think we've, we've blown the horn yet, so. There, there you go. And let's show what's in this box here. So this is your batteries, which connects to that coil, and we're gonna take a moment and show you a little demonstration on that. So Alan, in this section right here, we're gonna talk about the spark plug, the battery, and the coil. So go ahead, let's start, I guess, with the, uh, I guess we could start with, what do you wanna start with, the uh, drive? start with the batteries. All right. So in 1840s to the 1895s, all batteries were wet cells. So this was acid. Um, filled up and there was a carbi carbon core and, and copper posts and lead posts. And these were the batteries. It wasn't until about 1897 that commercial batteries came upon uh, dry cells. So you could have a, a separate cell that didn't spill. You could have it in your vehicle, your automobile. So, but you still needed to convert that three or four volts or five volts that the dry cells gave you to enough to fire a spark plug. But there were no spark plugs at the time. So the spark plugs shut, of the, of the, the time, of that for a moment. that's a spark plug of the time. And this is a Didion Butone, Butone spark plug. And this, these are the actual spark plugs made for the vehicle that we're talking about. And these spark plugs would last literally hundreds of years because you have the same electrode ground as any other spark plug has. But these have 18 thousandths of an inch gap. It has three points, but still only one needed to spark. But if it ever got carboned up, you could simply take this apart, take this porcelain out, clean it, place it back inside, and you're good for another 50 years. Mm. So it should last forever. Wow. And then these spark plugs needed some way to fire. So these batteries are make five or six volts, but we needed 10,000 or 20,000 volts to fire this spark plug. So this is a Ruhmkopf multi-vibrator coil. So this coil has got a primary with 100 turns and a secondary with 20,000 turns, which is a multiplier as long as you made and broke the connection. So we're gonna demonstrate an actual patent um, experiment from the 1800s, and that's the 1800s meter, and this is an original Ruhmkopf coil. Can we shut the lights off real quick? Go ahead. There's your spark there. You can see your spark plug there. As I show that that way. And you can see your spark up there. And your spark down here. All right. Okay, so we've come back from that demonstration and take a look at this chain. Tell me about this chain, Alan. That's this looks a, unique. That's called a skip link chain, 
It's not a very efficient chain because it's not a roller chain like the modern chains were a few years later than this. So this adds a lot of friction when you, if you were going to drive through it. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing like a much sturdier uh, base there too. Is that just because of the pressure you need to put on it? Well, you're starting the engine. Okay. So you're starting the engine and you're pedaling the bike and the bike weighs or the, the vehicle weighs more than 200 pounds. Yeah. So you've got 350, 400 pounds worth of weight with you and the bike. Yeah. Oh. So it needs to be sturdy. Yeah. We've got a bell here. Go ahead, we'll ring that. Okay, we'll ring this bugle up top here. Very nice. And as I work my way back around, we've got this tank. Now this tank is just not a normal tank. Tell us what's happening here. Well, it's not really a gasoline tank. It's, it's where all your chemicals are placed. So you've got oil in a section on this, you've got uh, hexane in a section, and you've got hemptane in a section. Okay. So you, you, mit, you, you open up your hexane for, for 10 seconds. And that's and very flammable. Extremely flammable, the fumes are. Not the, not the fluid itself, but the fumes are very flammable, okay. used in dry cleaning. Got it. And then th you open up the hemptane the same way, and you let the, the raw hemptane fluid go into what's called the surface carburetor, which is this triangular right. on the side. Which is what we showed earlier in the um, manual. And then, and then you open up the oil for 10 or 15 seconds, enough to put a pill bottle full of oil in the crankcase, which is enough for maybe 10 miles, and now you've got it ready to go. Now you need to open up these valves for these two chemicals uh, long enough so it moves the, the, the indicator that's in the, what's called the chimney up high enough where you can see it because you're moving, you're putting enough fluid so you have enough fumes in Got there. It. Once you have enough fumes in there, it will fire once you turn your ignition on. So in a little bit, you'll see the rod come up out of this. Now is that just vapors that's pushing that up, or what's? No, it's fluid. Fluid makes it's a float level and a fluid. Got it. So the fluid is uh, hexane and hemptane, and it evaporates very quickly. It's got mm -hmm. a boiling point of 93 degrees. Okay. So you put the $200 worth the chemicals in there, and unless you drain it as soon as you get done, put it back in a black jar and put it in an air-conditioned room, you've lost the material. Mm. So each time we put the material in it, the tank is basically completely dry. So we have to put enough fuel in it to raise that float Got so it. we have this much volume of liquid fuel so we have this much volume of fumes. Makes perfect sense. Okay, there's our rod. I see it. I see it. Let me focus on that. You see that there? So this yeah. rod yep. is float actuated. Got it. And this is our chimney. So it's, it has to be half inch above that. So you, you move the chimney up and you move an O-ring down to keep your chimney in the right spot. Well, I can only imagine people in 1897 trying yeah. to do all these different things. So this will, this is $200 worth of fuel in here right now. Right. So this will go bad so quickly, i.e. evaporate. Yeah. So when we're not playing with it, we're putting this cork back in Got the chimney, which is pushes down that float and then we can talk about the bike or do whatever we want because yeah. it's not going to evaporate. I'm with you. But as okay. soon as we start it, we have to take that float back out so we can get the so the, we can blow the fumes because it runs only on fumes. It doesn't run on any kind of fuel. It runs only on fumes. Got and it. it. And by pedaling it, it pushes the fumes into the engine. I'm with you. Okay. Alan, what do you have here in this bowl? This is whale oil which is what's in my can. Okay. And you step over here. Okay. And I only want this much of whale oil in here. Okay. But the only way to assure that I've got the right amount is I drain it out to make sure I don't have too much. Okay, that makes sense because the total loss engine loses its oil. So I'm gonna open my oil socket and you start to see drips come out of there. Okay, what I'm doing now, I'm picking up oil here, uh -huh. and I'm delivering it. I'm picking up oil, and I'm delivering it. And you hear it trying to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Is there a certain amount of times you do it, or you just do it until you see something drip? Yeah, you gotta see it, then you're gonna wait and have it go. 20 seconds, make sure you have enough oil in there. Okay. Oh, I heard that. It burped. There it is. You seeing it now? Yeah, about five minutes went by for that to happen. Okay. Yep, I see it. So now I'm gonna put the, the cat back in, okay? Okay. Two more plunges. Okay. So it's pressurizing the system? Yeah. Is there a reason why you're doing it slower? You're feeling the back pressure? It's the, the, the what's on the outside of the plunger is leather. Yeah. And you can over push okay. leather and have the leather go from like this to like this. Yeah, right. Okay. Got it. Where yeah. is that leather inside the Inside tube? of this tank. Oh boy. And it's 120 some years old. Ah, uh, yeah. You can't get that over at the uh, local hardware store. So now we're assured we have oil in it. Right. And we have oil in all of the passageways it needs to be in, and we have a little bit in the crankcase. Got it. And then we're only looking at getting about half an inch to an inch in the bottom of the crankcase, which is still only a couple pill bottles full of oil. Right. And then the bottom of the, of the crank halves hit in that oil and spin it around, slosh it around, and lose it. It's total loss also. Got it. Yes. I'm with you. So and then this one here, what is this? That's the timing. timing. That's too much timing. Yep. That's retarded. Got it. Timing retarded. Okay. And this is a vacuum. It works off of this, I see. Yeah, it, it, it's a release valve. Yeah. It comes all the way down to here. Got it. Okay. And if you close that, I'm sure that you're not getting, it's not moving. Okay, got it. So is that what these two uh, looks like shifters are here? Is what, what these are two, these control the fumes okay. from, those, from those chemicals, those hexane and hemptane. Got this it. controls the, the amount that you're putting in. So right there might be half throttle and more forward might be full throttle. Yeah, so that's really your throttle. Yes. Okay, and now you've got a key. Let me see the 1897 key. That's your ignition key. So you keep that with you all the time and make sure before you fire the, the vehicle up, you put it in the, in the ignition. So that's your ignition. And that's really your contact. So it contacts from one side to the other. Yeah, and you might even call it a contactor. Yeah. But it okay. still won't fire yet because this handle, when it's over to the tight position, it's making the connection. Okay. When it's open, it's not connected. Okay, so you have, it's a two-stage start. You've got the key and this handle. Right. Got it. So the bike, the vehicle will go 45 mile an hour and commonly 30-ish miles an hour, but say you want to go 20 miles an hour, you'd be operating this handle back and forth, cutting the power, engaging the power, cutting the power, engaging so the power. So you wouldn't use a throttle here? here? No. You set this for maximum throttle okay. or half throttle. So you okay. th set your throttle to either 20 miles an hour or 40 miles an hour. Okay. And then of the 20 miles an hour, you control it by ignition on, ignition off, ignition on, ignition off, or you control, or you turn that to 40 miles an hour, and again, you turn it ignition on, turn it off. So if you're in the 40 mile section, say it goes 40 at the high speed, yeah. by turning this ignition back and forth, you can control it from about 15 mile an hour to 40 mile an hour by turning your engine on and off, on and off, on and off. Got it. And that's how you can go through traffic. Perfect. All right. The only thing we've got to do now is just start it. Yep. Sounds good. How's it feel? Yeah! <laughs> All right. Go ahead. There you have it, folks. One of the oldest vehicles in the world. The end.